Did you know you can save time by using Salesforce Flow to automate schedule payments with Chargent? Whether you're a brand new to Flows or Flow fanatic, this video will show you how to do just that. My name is Robert and I am from Chargent. If you're a Salesforce admin or a consultant who wants to take advantage of automation, then you are in the right place. Speaking of automation, we have a guide that will give you tips on how to automate your accounts receivable collections. Download using the link in the description below. If your business is based on subscriptions, you likely take payments when a customer buys and then begins recurring payments for the subscription. The one example is security provider whose customer buys a new security system and begins paying a monthly subscription fee once the system's activated. For our demo, we will assume an initial payment has been made and the customer security system has been activated. The installation tech now updates the opportunity to a close one, which will kick off our automation to begin recurring payments. Step one, creating and saving the flow. To get started, let's head over to Salesforce Setup and search for flow in the quick find box. Navigate to flow and click the new flow button to get started and select the record trigger flow. And finally, the create button. We need to set up the configure start screen to trigger when an opportunity object is updated with the stage name equals to close one. We only want this trigger when the record is updated to meet the conditions requirement. So let's select the option, leave the rest of the settings as is and click done. Before we continue, let's save our flow. I'll give it a name of opportunity close one, start recurring billing. You can add a short description and click save. Don't worry about the warning message. We'll add more to that flow now. But first, I want you to know that you can reduce your accounts receivable and collection challenges in Salesforce with Charging. Learn how Charging can save you time and money by making your payments configurable and automated. Download the guide using the link in the description of this video. Step two, get the existing charge and order. The first thing we will want to do is to get the charge and order from the initial payment. We will need to provide a label and API name along with the optional description. For the object, we will select charge and orders, then add our condition requirements. In our case, there should only be one charge and order related to the opportunity at this point. So let's simply filter based on the opportunity ID and only store the first record. Click done and then save the flow again. Step three, create variables. Before we jump straight to creating the new charge and order, let's create a few variables to help us out later in the process. Click on the toggle toolbox icon and select the new resource. We will start by creating a data formula we can use to set the date our subscription payment should start. In this case, let's start them 30 days after the opportunity is won. Select formula as the resource type and give the resource an API name. For the data type, select date and in the formula box, enter today plus 30 and click done. Let's add one more resource. And this time with the resource type of variable and data type of number. Again, we will add an API name and enter 1999 in the default value field. Click done, toggle the toolbox out of the way and let the fun begin. Step four, create the new charge and order. With all our pre-work complete, we're now ready to create the new charge and order that will collect recurring subscription payments each month. Go ahead and click save again and add another node to create a new record. You know the drill, enter value into the label and API name fields. Then select use separate resources and literal value radio button. Once again, we will select charge and order as our object. Next up, we need to set field values for the charge and order. With the exception of the variables we created and a few values we will set values for directly on the screen, most of the data comes from our initial charge and order. We will need to set the account and opportunity ID, gateway, billing information, payment information, and finally set up our recurring billing information. For the payment information, be sure to copy the token, payment method, card type, card last four, and expiration month and year. Flow will not allow you to copy encrypted data, so we map the expiration month and year indicator values to the encrypted expiration month and year fields. If you're collecting bank account information, you will want to include those fields as well. For our recurring billing information, we will need to set the payment status as recurring, payment frequency as monthly, payment stop as unending, and payment start date with the formula 
we created earlier. Finally, we will set manual charge checkbox to true and the charge amount field with the variable we created earlier. And there we are. Click done and save our flow. Step five, testing the flow. You can use the built-in run and debug tools to ensure your flow is working as expected, but for the sake of time, let's activate and test our flow. Here you can see we have an opportunity with an initial payment already made. Let's update our opportunity stage and see what happens. Perfect, a new charge and order was created as expected, ready to start collecting payments next month. And now that you know how to automate scheduled payments, check out this video where you'll learn more about payments in Salesforce using Chargent. My name is Robert, and I am from Chargent, where we are dedicated to helping you make Salesforce payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help.